right, to set the big story. All right, ladies, you're with me, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What I want to do is let's, I um, want you to paper here. What are some of those things that we've talked about so far? Just start firing them off at me so I'll write them down. All right. Yes? Creation. Creation. All right. Who's next? We'll just go, across, just go down the line. Uh, okay, Adam, you will put that under here. All right? Plates. Plates. All right? Haley. Promises. Promises. Right? Yes. The flood. The flood. Keep going. Yes. That was Ark. Uh, okay, the Ark. Keep going. Emma. The other Emma. Yeah. Um, Joseph, wasn't he? Joseph, that's right. See, you know this. You should have come to me. Alexa. The ball. What? The ball. Very good. Ball. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll put that down here, too. All right. Uh, yes. Moses. Moses. David and Goliath. All right, somebody was reading this week. Cool. I did. All right, yes. Uh, Battle of Jericho. Jericho. Oh, cool. All right. Alex. <laughs> Who? David. All right. What else? Let me put up on here. Yes. Um, waiting on music. Okay. Uh, what's, the, what's the technical name that is? Red Sea. What? Red Sea. Right. We'll put, we'll put uh, Exodus. Right? Exodus is that word that means leaving. We're talking about going out of Egypt. We'll put Exodus and Red Sea. What else? Big picture stuff. Anything else we need to add? All right, let's do this. What's number one? Creation. All right, we're going to number them. You're going to number them for me. Creation's one. What else might work? All right. Creation's one. What's two? Or one. You can two or one at one B or whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, promises to who? Okay. Do we do we need to add that? Um, yeah. All right. All right. What comes for promises though? Yeah. Adam. All right. Okay, Adam and Eve. We'll put this. Is we'll put that one A, one B. All right. What's next? Yeah. The blood. The blood. <laughs> what? The promises to Adam and Eve. Promises? The fall. Fall, remember? Yeah, okay. So fall is two, then? Uh, promises. Promises, three. All right. Let's, okay, we're doing promises, then what's next? Yeah. The flood. Flood, right? We, all, we buy that? Yes. Okay. That's four. What's five? Flood. Moses, okay, that's five. What's six? Plague. Plague, six. What's, what's next? Exodus, Red Sea. All right. Exodus, uh, Red Sea is seven, right? What's eight? Jericho. No one Joseph. Oh, eight. Joseph. Oh. We would have missed Joseph. So where'd Joseph go? Joseph would be eight, right? All right. Where's, remember where Joseph goes? Was Joseph, okay, stop and think. Was Joseph before Moses or after Moses? After. No, before. Before, right? Oh, yeah. Our story Joseph, right? Joseph went down into Egypt. Okay. All right. So where are we going to put Joseph? Five. Five. No, not five before this, right? So it's going to be 
We'll put 4B, right? Okay. We'll do 4 and then 4B, and then 5 is Moses and plagues. Okay, we're at 7 Red Sea. What's 8? Jericho. All right, 8. What's, what's 9? David and Goliath. 9, all right. What's 10? David. Okay. You get everything? What did we miss? Yes. Abraham. Abraham. Ah, where's that go up underneath here? You're up, you, you found it, Emma. Where's it go? Does it go separately or go with something? You want me to put it separate or something? Okay. Okay, so if Abraham is on on here then, all right, where does it go? Somebody help her, where's it go? Yes? After the fall. Okay, after the fall. Wait, wait. Three? Like no, three D. something. Does Abraham occur before or after the flood? You can use your Bible, this is a memory test. Yes? It comes before, but we're missing Cain and Abel. Because doesn't Abraham come after Cain? Okay, all right. Well, let's get Abraham in here, okay? All right, so Abraham, Abraham's key, right? Abraham goes where? Before. Mm -hmm. No. Okay, it's something to think, all right? Is Abraham before or after, was Abraham before or after the flood? Before. before. Because it was all his descendants no. that started evil doing it. Uh, who said no? Okay. I'm hearing yes and I'm hearing no. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Yes. All right, before. you can use your Bibles. Use your storybooks. Hey, what contents is really good, guys. All right. All right. Okay. Before, yeah. before the flood? No. No. It be after the flood. All right. So we've got. We're gonna put Abraham then as that's four A and four B. Okay. Now we've got Abraham in here, right? So what are you going to add in here? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. All right. Uh, where's the ball? We'll put the Cain and Abel. All right. So what? We'll put Cain and Abel in there. And that's two, is that two B? We don't want to remember the whole thing, so we'll put names and Bs, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. In the name. Okay. What else? Is there anything else we missing? You like this list? Mm -hmm. Is everything in there? Wait, I think. Since I've asked 33 times, some of you are going, okay, we're missing something. Yes. The Ten Commandments. Ah. <laughs> the chain. <laughs> All right, another word for the Ten Commandments is, remember what the we used was? Covenant? Yeah. Right? Another word for covenant is Time. promise. No. No. Okay. Okay. We'll put those two together. Now, where's, where does this go? You gotta get the number in. You got it. Where, where does this go? All right. Five B. Five B. Okay. It's after Moses. What's plagues are six? Okay. Does it come before? Does it come before or after the plagues? It's after, after the plagues. Does it come after before or after the Red Sea? After, after the Red Sea. So it's right. like 7B, right? We're going to do it 8. No, 7B. 7B. 7B, okay, 7A. 7B. All right. We like that? Yeah. Anything else we need to add? Oh, no. Oh, no. Remember, remember, we have your number. Now we're talking big picture. This is upper story stuff. Upper story, you don't want to get too many details in here. We could do a little. What about Moses like dying and then Joshua being in Okay, is, is, is that covered in this whole story in here? Mm -hmm. Somewhere? Um, yeah. Okay, all right, yeah, all right. Uh, ten commandments. Okay, we've got ten commandments. Promise mm -hmm. here, all right. Um, what about. 
Okay. You guys like this? Yeah. Who likes it? Yeah, I do too. This is a good list. Okay. All right. Wait, I did this for what? Just to kill 20 minutes, 15 minutes here? No, no, for the big picture. Okay, big picture. All right, the big picture to remind to do what? Why big picture? All right? So that's like the, the way things happen in order. Right, the way things happen and in order. And what else did you guys figure out? Who came up with this? I mean, tonight, who came up with this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. There's, one, there's somebody in state understanding the story. Thank you. All right. Who came up with this tonight? Yeah. You did. All right. Exactly. All right. So if you guys came up with this, what does that mean, right? That you guys... some chapters in here, all right, for the sake of time. If they had given me 30 some odd weeks, we'd have covered all of them. But I didn't figure you guys wanted to keep going confirmation until about August. Did you, I can add, talk to Pastor John tomorrow and we can go to August. We can, we can postpone confirmation indefinitely and you can just go to classes every Wednesday night probably from now till next Christmas. Okay, so we skip some for the sake of the story, all right? So what I'm going to do here is try to break my ankles. Fun. Why don't we all break our ankles? No. All right, yes. Sam already broke his foot. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play this because this, this video is a good review of everything you've done, and you're going to see a lot of this stuff on here. It's kind of why I did it first, to show you, you know, it's the best part going to do. In the beginning, God created the universe, and within it, a planet called Earth. God's spirit hovered over the dark and empty surface, speaking life into it. Light appeared. Sky and land split from the oceans. Trees and plants grew. Days and nights began. And all kinds of creatures filled the earth. Humans were formed in God's image to continue God's work. Things were really good. But soon, humans decided we want to live our way, not God's. In their struggle for control, selfishness and violence filled the world. So God started over with just Noah and his family. A few generations later, God made this covenant to a man named Abraham. The land around you, as far as you can see, is now yours. Your family will be as many as the stars and will be my blessing to the entire world. Years passed. Then miraculously, in their old age, Abraham and his wife had their only son, Isaac, just as God promised decades earlier. Later, Isaac had twins, Jacob and Esau. Then Jacob had 12 sons. The youngest, Joseph, moved the family to Egypt, saving them from a famine. There, they grew into a large nation, a people called to be different, to remind everyone what it looks like to live in God's ways. Abraham's descendants, now called the people of Israel, were moved to Egypt by Joseph to save them from a famine. There, they grew into a large nation, the Egyptians welcomed them at first, but soon this turned into fear and jealousy. The Israelites were forced to be slaves and do hard labor. But God heard their cries of pain. Through a humble leader named Moses and incredible signs and wonders, God led the Israelites in a great exodus back toward their promised land. As the Israelites journeyed through the desert, God guided them with a pillar of fire at night and a cloud by day. The Israelites complained about being hungry and abandoned. So God sent birds and sweet flaky manna for them to eat and made fresh water pour from a rock. God even lived in the middle of their camp in a sacred tent called a tabernacle. Along their journey, 
God gave them special instructions called laws and commands guiding the Israelites to live differently, to show others how to follow God's way. But the people complained. We don't want to live by these rules like slaves again. Living their own ways, the Israelites wandered the desert for 40 years. After decades of complaining and struggling in the desert, a new leader named Joshua charged the Israelites back into their homeland. Miraculously, God stopped the flow of the Jordan River so they could safely cross. God warned, drive out everyone who lives in the promised land or they will corrupt your lives. But the Israelites didn't listen, intermarrying and worshiping the false gods of the people who remained there. Soon, God's protection was removed and other nations overpowered Israel. In their defeat, they suffered, begging God for help. So God sent judges to lead them in battle, defending the promised land. In victory, the people worshipped God, but soon after, they turned from God and lived their own rebellious ways. This became a pattern from generation to generation. This was a time when everyone did what was right in their own eyes. All right, the section there from, we talked about Jericho in the story. A section from Jericho on was part of that stuff that we jumped, all right? So you kind of know it kind of filled in, right? So after listening to this, is there anything else you want to add to this? Yeah. stuff. But these details are these big things. Yeah, it's, you can make the case either way, right? Okay. I think you got a good list. Even after listening to the review, I think you guys got a good list. Okay. So, now what we're going to do, if I can make this work. to his son, Samuel. One night, God spoke to him in his room, telling him about things that would happen in Israel in the future. God would use Samuel to speak to the Israelites over and over as a prophet. But the Israelites weren't satisfied with the prophet. Despite Samuel's warning against it, they demanded God give them a king. God told Samuel who to make king. A man named Saul, when the Israelites saw him, they shouted, Long live the king! 
The Philistines gathered a huge army. Some of the Israelites ran away in fear. But Samuel gave instructions to Saul that would lead to their victory. Saul grew impatient, and before Samuel got there, he offered the sacrifice himself. Saul's actions had terrible consequences. It was time for another king. That was all part of the stop part we skipped. All right, this is the stuff we're picking up on. One day, God told the prophet Samuel that it was time for a new king and sent him to the house of a man named Jesse. Jesse had seven sons and brought out each of them to meet Samuel. Samuel told Jesse that David, his youngest son, would be the future king of Israel. Shortly after this, an army of the Philistines, Israel's enemy, set up camp on a hill right across the valley from Israel's army. For 40 days in a row, a gigantic Philistine warrior named Goliath would walk down to the valley and mock the Israelites. But one day when David was visiting the army camp, he heard Goliath taunting the Israelites and asked why no one was willing to fight Goliath. After getting King Saul's permission, David went down into the valley and shouted to Goliath, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Goliath and David charged toward one another. David pulled out a stone, put it in a sling, and flung it at the giant. The stone struck Goliath directly in the forehead, and then David killed him with Goliath's own sword. This victory caused David to become so loved and respected that King Saul became very jealous. Saul tried to kill David, but David escaped into the desert. One day, Saul was in a cave and David snuck up on him. But David could not bring himself to kill Saul. When Saul realized what had happened, he made a peace treaty with David, promising he would not kill him. But not long after, Saul became jealous and tried to kill David again. The Philistines attacked the Israelites and killed all three of Saul's sons. When Saul heard the news, he was so upset that he took out his own sword, fell on it, and killed himself. Then, David was named King of Israel. He made plans to build a giant building called a temple as a place to worship God. God said a temple would eventually be built, but by one of David's sons. One of David's descendants would become a king unlike any before, one whose rule would never end.
written down or at least something in. I, I see hidden down and still scratching, so that's okay. All right. All right, got it? Okay, you got it in here. Leaders, get your groups together and just share. Have to make sure everybody shares what they wrote and why, what it means to them, what, what they saw in there.
and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and shall bruise his heel. Right, between, right? The promise between the offspring of Eve and Satan, right? Who's the offspring of Eve he's talking about? All people. This is a Sunday school question. Who's he talking about? Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Right. Right? It's the promise. Thank you. There's a promise that a Savior is going to come. All right? There's this promise that a Savior is going to come. Now, I want you to jump to what's the next promise that God makes? To who? No. Uh, yeah, Noah, okay. Uh, I'm going to throw Noah up here. I'll just come back to that in only two. But the next big promise that he makes here is to who? To Abraham. To Abraham. Abraham. All right. And what's he promised to Abraham? Somebody open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1. All right. Who 
is David's great, 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 grandfather? Abraham. All right. What you're doing in the story here is you're tracking this promise down. Now, where's this promise going to end up? You guys, we've all been through first year confirmation, right? Mm -hmm. We've been through the Bible stories. Where is this promise getting up at the bottom of the list? Mm -hmm. Jesus, right? You know where it's going. It's going to be end up there at Jesus, all right? We're just going to see how it gets there. Okay. All right. That's going to fill in the blank stuff on, in here. I want to make sure we've got our big picture stuff. All right. Uh, our group that's doing our reading, right? Saul got David constantly. 
from him one day as he hid from Saul in a cave. David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. He called out to Saul. My lord the king, I spared you. I cut off the corner of your robe but did not kill you. See that I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. When David finished saying this, Saul left. You are more righteous than I am. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. May the Lord reward you. I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. After Saul died, God directed David to, his, to assert his calling as king. Soon afterward, David twice led the Israelites in decisive victories over the troublesome Philistines. This period also saw one of David's most important accomplish, accomplishments. He overtook Jerusalem, making it Israel's national and spiritual capital. But where that the treasured Ark of the Covenant desired a majestic home, David began to conceive of a permanent temple. David consulted with Nathan, the trusted prophet of God, about his plans. And the prophet's reply, reflecting God's mind on the matter, must have stunned David. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. The Lord will build the house for you. I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. He is the one who will build the house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be a father, and he will be my son. David organized an effective army with trusted leadership and used it strategically to stabilize Israel. David was a warrior, a poet, and a man after God's heart. He was a leader who put God first, who loved the following God, wherever the record showed, record showed that God was his shepherd king. But David was not perfect man as well as we will see in the next book. Give a round of applause! Hey! hey, hey. Read it again, Alexa. 
You're reading great, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon, I didn't mean to. Alexa, Alexa, if I, I was offensive, I apologize. Okay. All right, go ahead. All right. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. The Lord will build the house for you. I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. He is the one who will Stop. What'd you just say? Offspring. Offspring to, offspring to succeed you. All right? A son who is going to be successful. If he's succeeding David, who's he, what's he going to be? King. King. All right? Now keep going, Alexa. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his right there. He's gonna do. He's gonna build. Son, he's gonna raise the son to build the temple. The son's gonna be king. And the third part was. Yeah. To build be the one to build. Yeah. Right. How long is it gonna be for? Hmm? What? Do we have a son? A long time. We need right? a seed. What was seed? Forever, right? <laughs> oh. Oh, right. <laughs> There. I'll make, I'll make Alexa read it again, right? Listen. I will raise up. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. The Lord will build a house for you. I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. He is the one who will build a house for me. And I will establish his throne for for and ever. ever. Like I said with you guys, all right, what you were doing here is you were jumping, I should put this up here, you were jumping from here to here. It's important to see these for the upcoming story. So these are the promises that we've got so far. God makes a promise to Adam and Eve of a Savior. He makes a promise to Abraham of a son. He makes the promise of David of a son who will be king forever. What we're in the process of doing is the process of this upper story is seeing God fulfilling these promises. So what I'm trying to leave you with today is this, this is part of the story of God leaving his promises and fulfilling his promises. Now, what I want you to do in here is do the part here, the story, right, in here. But I want you, the question I want you to ask is, what part of this story is most meaningful for you? Got it? So I want you to focus on right now, is what part is most meaningful for you, right? Symbol or story or notes or whatever it is. I'm going to have you share with your group.
shows no matter how small you are, no matter as long as you're with God, he will give you the power to win okay. the battle. All right. Yeah. Oh, when David didn't kill Saul, he did Ooh. All right. Why not? Why that? And then I'm going to follow up for everybody here. Go ahead. Because Saul was trying to kill David and was just a wife, and David had a chance to pretty much save himself. So why didn't, for, for everybody, why didn't David just kill him? Because he forgives. Like he God. forgives? So how, how easy would that would, would have been for you? Not easy. Well, nowadays it would have been pretty hard because you could get arrested and juvie. <laughs> <laughs> and they found, like, fingerprints or any of that stuff. But, but you could think of it like, what if someone's mean to you? Alright, so so sit here and I want you to think I want you to think for a second, alright? Think in your school or not necessarily in your school, but I'm sure there's probably one in your school. Think in your school the person who is your worst nightmare. You don't, don't use names. All right. When I was in the seventh grade, it was a kid by the name of Jim Clark. All right. We called him Clark far behind his back. He 
with you and be walking down the hall in the school and he had this nasty way of knowing when nobody was watching and you'd be walking by and he did this to girls too, he didn't care. He'd be walking by and as he's walking by like, I don't want to hit you, come on, stand up, Alex, all right? <laughs> as he's walking, you're walking by in the hall, he'd just go, pow. What? As he you're walking by. Girls? No hit me. I was like, look at here, Mr. Uh, Jordan. And one of those things, he'd be walking go. fast. You'd be walking and he'd just go, pow. Did you bleep? And it, you'd, be, you'd be past and he'd be around the corner before you could do anything. All right? In, yeah. All right? He didn't do that. He would sit here and he was great at uh, swiping lunches. No. <laughs> what is it, Yogi Bear? No. Slide the no, slide. All right, you, you, got, you, got a, you got a contribution here? Well, yeah. my Yogi class bear. has anger problems, so we do that stuff a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we put, we put our food on someone else's trays, and then we go and, and then they eat the food. middle of my cinnamon roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so. I was a right? little See, you're with me here, right? <laughs> it's that guy or that girl. Now put the story of David and Goliath back in that context. Goliath was a meme. <laughs> All right. Suddenly it becomes right. Suddenly becomes a story, right? How many giants do you really face, right? Except if you play basketball. Right. Right. Okay. What else? Somebody else. Somebody from the back row has it contributed. What's most meaningful? Somebody on the back row. Nine was the same with the other that David shares Paul's life. Okay. Right. Somebody else. Sorry, yours was different. Uh, I just did the promises. The promises. Okay. All right. God never breaks promises. God never breaks promises. All right. So I'm going, to, I'm going to set you up here a little bit for next week. Is David a, we think David's, would you classify David as a good guy or a bad guy? Bad guy. Right. What do you know now? Well, Some of you may know more of the story. But what do you know now? Good. Is David a good guy or a bad guy? Yeah. Good guy. It depends on your point of view you're looking at. Yes. If you're an Israelite, it'd be good for the Philistines to be bad because what, go their leader. Okay. Yeah. People were, in my eyes, would be good. Okay. Yeah. David here. All right, well, hang, hang on. You, you, make a good, you make a good point, right? Is if you're an Israelite, it's, he's a good guy, and a Philistine, he's a bad guy. So whose viewpoint do you think we ought to look at? Jesus is. I would say oh. more. Jesus. Oh, hang on. These girls are, girl, girls are having light bulbs go off back here. Like, keep going, ladies. Molly, Molly and Haley over here got light bulbs going off. So everybody let, let them. I don't. Yeah. Right. We should look on Jesus' point of view. Okay. Now, look at the story again on Jesus' point of view. Okay. Is David a good guy or a bad guy? Oh, what you, for what you know now. Good. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Did everybody catch what just happened here? Yeah. Yes. In, in the back, sometimes the go lazy, whoever's in the, whatever group's in the back row, I worry that they're kind of zoning on me or something. That's I got it. Okay. All right. Okay. You guys listen? Right? Yeah. Because when you're going down and reading these stories, right, there's, there's, like this story, there's a Philistine's viewpoint, Israelite's viewpoint, and let's, okay, let's look at this from God's standpoint. Good job picking things up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause with that. I haven't given you guys, we did in here, um, some small group time. I'll give you guys some small group time. Next week is... Chapter... Chapter 12. Next week, chapter 12. Now, I asked for essays. I have mine. For what God is like. Uh, if you would, if you've got.
got those, put these up here. If you don't have those, I need them next week. All right? And make sure you got your name on them, because I don't do well.